right? Because it's Excel loading. Let, let me uh, make sure this is the same. Okay, element. Okay, they are all in tension. Okay. So, anything else to analyze? The answer is no for now. Okay, so as I said, the analysts say do not analyze the dots and the what? And the cross. Okay, then we are going to look at the next view. Next view. Okay, so the, the next view that we are going to uh, see is I'm going to look at the plan view now. Okay, so with the plan view, what do I mean by plan view? I'm going to view this in now. I'm going to look this as my uh, X. Okay, now this is my Y. And uh, sorry, Z. And then this is rotation, but Y. So from here, I'm going to sketch that view now. Okay, so you can. I I, I hope you all play Lego. Okay, playing Lego will help you sketch. I'll tell you that. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then, this is the top. Okay. Then again, you con you have to construct where your elements are, okay? Because if you don't construct your elements are, you have not a clue what you are analyzing, okay? So this over here now, I'm I'm doing from the plan view. This will be my element H. Right over here will be my element K, okay? And then a good thing to do now is to draw your uh, neutral axis. Okay, so this is my neutral axis. Okay, so now start putting all your forces in. Okay, so you have. Uh, 150 pounds. So I better do them in red. You have your 150 pounds. Okay. And then you have your 50 pounds. Okay. Then you have your 200 pounds. And then you have your 150. Now from the plan view, as you see, you can uh, you can visualize why the 150 pounds will induce that axial load. It's aligned to your what? It's aligned to your neutral axis, isn't it? Right, it's so much uh clearer now okay so now we we know right we we look at is there any uh uh perpendicular distance okay so now now we know that from the elements okay either h or k you will have perpendicular distance in this direction now okay so we know that this is uh four inch and we know here to here is six inches, right? That's a perpendicular. So this perpendicular distance, is it going to induce a moment or a torsion? So if you look at here, I'm just sketching how the uh, structure will deform, right? So the 200 is pretty big. So if the if the uh, structure is going to deform, okay, you, you, you just guess first. Okay, this this I'm making a guess. I'm making a, a guess that the structure will deform this way. 
Okay. Why I'm betting on that? Because the 200 has a bigger perpendicular distance than the 50. The 140 has a smaller distance. Okay. So I'm guessing that this is the deformation pattern. I can be wrong. If it's wrong, you just turn it around. Okay. So this is a deformation pattern. Okay. So now you write up the equation. Okay. So now I'm going to I'm going to assume. OK, that clockwise moment is positive. And the moment will be about the, the y axis. OK, summation. Now, this is not static analysis. I did not say it's equal to zero. I just say clockwise is positive. OK, so now the 150 is going to generate uh, anti-clockwise, right? So it's minus 4 multiply by 150. Okay. The 50 is going to generate uh, anti-clockwise again. So minus 10 multiply by 50. Then I do a plus, okay, uh, 10 multiply by 200. So the outcome of this is that you have what? You have uh, minus 40, uh, minus 4 times 150, minus 10 times 50, plus by 10 times 200. So it's positive 900. Okay, it's going to be uh, positive 900 pound inch. 900 pound inch positive means your guess direction is correct. Okay, so when you guess correct, means this direction is positive. So this is moment about y. Okay. Again, it's important to know whether is it X or Y, uh, Z or Y. Okay. So now this we know is compression. On top is what tensor or tension. So once you calculate this again, immediately put in. So we, when when we calculate this, we're going to use our stress in the X direction. Still X. So we have M Y over I Y Y multiply by z and for this case right we know that element h is at the neutral axis so it will be equal to what zero because it is at the neutral axis that is why it's so important to draw where the neutral axis is okay then again you will count you will you will you will analyze the element k you will have what compression okay okay then we have one more thing uh to analyze that we have to analyze that uh the shear v in the z direction okay so I'm going to analyze the shear in the z direction where going up is positive. Okay, so you have 150 plus by 50 minus by 200. So this is equal to what? Zero. So the shear force in the z direction is equal to uh, equal to zero. Okay. Why we we analyze this is because we later on we have to know the shear vz over i y y q y divided by t okay so we know that it is equal to zero okay now i know i'm running a bit give me another 10 minutes okay i will i will i will rush later on for my appointment but it's okay i want to clarify this what i want to talk about is the moment Okay. You can see for this case, right? For this case, right? The moment, the 150 and 50 distance is relative to the what? To the element. Right? Okay. But in the previous case, right, the 150 over here, the perpendicular distance is relative 
to the neutral axis. A lot of times students make the mistake. Students make the mistake that both has to be relative to the element, right? But no, why? One is relative to the neutral axis or not why? When is it relative to the neutral axis and when is relative to the element? And it's simple, okay? And I'm going to, this is rule number four, okay? So I'm going to write up rule number four, okay? So rule number four, I'm going to change the, the, the view. Now this, this is important. Again, a lot of times, not just you, you guys, okay? I teach this same course in mechanical engineering department, exactly the same, okay? Students everywhere, okay, make the same mistake, okay? It's not to say that you are poorer student or they are better, no, we are the same, okay? But it's the ability to identify what is this system. So rule number four. So if or when, okay, when the applied force is parallel okay, to the Neutral axis. Okay. The distance, the perpendicular distance is between the applied force. to the neutral axis. Okay. And now what I'll do is I will copy this diagram. So you can see for yourself. Yeah, I'm going to copy this diagram. Undo, undo, undo. It always does this to me. Oh, you stupid piece of junk. Okay, I'm just going to paste like this. Okay. okay like for this case. Yeah, you can see this case. It's a clear cut case. Okay, so I'll, I'll highlight. So this force over here, right? And the neutral axis are what? Parallel. So when the applied force is parallel to the neutral axis, right? You can, you can see both the neutral axis and applied force are on, on the same uh, direction or on the same axis, which is pointing to. The perpendicular distance is between what? between the applied force to the neutral axis, right? That's where we get the 10, okay? Then I'll, I'll, I'll write the next one. So the next one is when the applied force, right? Now it's perpendicular, okay? Perpendicular, no, let me write properly. So when the applied force, when the applied force is perpendicular to the neutral axis, okay. The perpendicular distance
Okay. Uh, it's between 